Hey, welcome back again to Jody Productions videos. This YouTube channel is based around physics and mathematics. And for those of you returning to my YouTube channel, thank you so much for sticking by us. And for those who are new to my YouTube channel, welcome. Today's video, we're looking at beta plus decay. Today's video forms part of a four video series in which we look at alpha decay, beta minus decay, beta plus decay, and gamma decay. Please check the comments box below this video for links to all four of these videos. Before commencing today's video, let's do a quick recap on nuclei structure. As we're studying nuclear physics, we're not interested in the electronic configuration or the orbits of electrons. We're purely interested in what's happening inside the nucleus. So a quick recap. Inside the atomic nucleus, there are protons, which we've got colored here blue, and neutrons, which we have colored red. Now, collectively, these two particles are known as nucleons, and the term nucleon comes from particles within the nucleus. We also understand that there are four fundamental forces that operate in the standard model of physics, three of which exist within the atomic nucleus. The first is the electromagnetic force. The second is the strong force. The third is the weak force. We also have the gravitational force, but this has no application in the current model of nuclear physics. So first of all, we can see the electromagnetic force, which creates an electrostatic repulsion between two positively charged protons. They're pushing away. They're repelling each other. So each one of these blue-shaped protons will be pushing away. We then have what we call the strong nuclear force. And it exists between any two nucleons, whether it be a proton and a neutron, whether it be two protons, or indeed two neutrons. And you can see they're attracting. This force is extremely strong, operates only at very close proximities, about the diameter of a a neutron or a proton. And so their job is to hold the nucleus together. You notice also that we do have a weak force involved inside the nucleus. However, we're not using it at this point in time as it cannot be thought of as a push or pull force. It has applications later on. We look at beta decay. So our notation very, very quickly, we know that the nuclei notation consists of, first of all, a chemical symbol where we have here at the moment the letter X that gets interchanged with whatever symbol we're looking at from the periodic table. The atomic number, which is the number Z, the atomic number, as we've displayed down below, represents the number of protons, and it defines an element. And the mass number A represents the number of neutrons and the number of protons located in the nucleus. And collectively, we can call that combination of protons and neutrons the number of nucleons. All this information allows us to arrange our elements within the periodic table. Let's look at a couple of very simple examples. So in the three examples to follow, we're asked to state the number of nucleons, protons, and neutrons. So first of all, we have neon 21, we have silver 109, and we have platinum 180. Once again, we're asked to state the number of nucleons, protons, and neutrons. Let's go through these three examples. So first of all, the number of nucleons is equal to the mass number, and in this case, we've highlighted 21 in red. So the mass number for this particular isotope of neon is 21. The number of protons is equal to the atomic number Z, which in this case is colored green, is 10. And the number of neutrons can be calculated from subtracting the atomic number from the mass number. So we're subtracting 10 from 21 and leaves us with 11 neutrons. Let's repeat this process for our silver sample. So the number of nucleons is again the mass number. That represents 109 in this particular isotope. The number of protons is the atomic number Z. And that represents the number 47 as shown in green. And the number of neutrons is the difference between the mass number and the atomic number. So it's 109 take away 47. In this particular isotope of silver, we have 62 neutrons. And finally, our example of platinum 180. So the number of nucleons, again, is the mass number A, and that represents, in this case, 180, as shown in red. The number of protons is the atomic number Z, and that represents 78, in this case, shown in green. And the number of neutrons is the difference between the mass number A and the atomic number Z. So in this case, it's 180 takes 78. This equates to the number of neutrons being 102. So let's have a look at beta plus decay. You have on the screen in front of you a carbon-10 nuclei. consists of six protons and four neutrons, making up a total mass number of 10. And it's a relatively unstable nucleus, and it readily undergoes beta plus decay. So during beta plus decay, we see that the carbon-10 nuclei has transformed into a boron 10 nuclei. It's actually changed its nucleus into a new element altogether. And in doing so, it's emitted two 
quantities. Number one is a zero plus one E, which is a positron. And the second one is a zero zero with a little italics V, and this represents a neutrino. A beta plus particle is a high speed positron, and it can be written as either zero plus one E or zero plus one with the beta symbol from the Greek alphabet. Now a positron, if you like, is an anti-electron. It's an antiparticle or an antimatter, a counterpart of the electron. It has the same spin, it has the same mass, it has the same magnitude of charge, only it's positively charged. So first of all, we notice that there's a conservation of the atomic number. The original carbon 10 nuclei has six as the atomic number. And once it decays, there's a five for boron plus the plus one for the positron. Six before, six after. So there's a conservation of the atomic number. Likewise, there's a conservation of the mass number. We have 10 for the mass number for the carbon 10 nuclei. And after it decays, we have 10 for the mass number of the boron nuclei. No mass numbers for the positron or the neutrino. We have equal number of nucleons. Let's look at the big picture of what's happening during this decay. So we start with a carbon 10 nuclei. It's called the parent nuclei, the first generation. It decays and generates a second generation nuclei, and we call that the daughter nuclei. And in this case, it's boron 10. In addition, we have a beta positive particle that's being emitted, and we also have a neutrino. Now, neutrinos have to be generated for the conservation of energy, which is a bit above and beyond the course of VCA physics. Let's look at the fascinating physics that happens inside the nucleus. So during beta plus decay, a proton transforms into a neutron, a positron, and a neutrino. So diagrammatically, we can see here, we have a proton that exists in the carbon 10. And when we undergo beta plus decay, that proton has changed into a neutron. So in doing so, we've gone from an atomic number of six down to an atomic number of five. However, our mass number remains the same as the parent nuclei, because whilst we've lost a proton, we've gained a neutron. What is occurring is a proton, which is made up of two up quarks and one down quark, is changing into a neutron, which is made of an up quark and two down quarks. This change in quark is a result of the weak nuclear force. In addition to this transition from a proton to a neutron, a positron is generated as is a neutrino. Here's our general equation for a beta plus decay. What we find is the daughter nuclei has the same mass number as the parent nuclei. However, the atomic number of the daughter nuclei decreases by one from the parent nuclei. So let's look at three examples. Example number one, complete the following decay equation, which displays 18 fluorine undergoing beta plus decay. So here's our equation and we're trying to solve for the red unknown question mark. Here's our general equation for beta plus decay. So first of all, we know that in beta plus decay, the mass number does not change from the parent nuclei to the daughter nuclei. So it stays at 18. We also know that the atomic number does get reduced by one. So we started with number nine for fluorine, and that has been reduced by one for our unknown daughter nuclei. So that gives us in our daughter nuclei an atomic number of eight and a mass number of 18. We check our periodic table and atomic number of eight tells me we're looking at an oxygen nuclei, oxygen 18. Example number two. Complete the following decay equation, which displays 23 magnesium as a daughter nuclei via beta minus decay. So in this example, we're given the daughter nuclei and we wish to work backwards for the parent nuclei. So here's our general equation for beta plus decay. So we know the parent nuclei has exactly the same mass number as the daughter nuclei. That's quite simple. And we also know that the parent nuclei has one more proton than does the daughter nuclei. So that means our unknown parent nuclei will have a mass number of 23 and an atomic number of 12. We look up the periodic table, the only nuclei that has an atomic number of 12 is magnesium. So our parent nuclei must have been magnesium 23 before it underwent beta minus decay to create a daughter nuclei of 23 magnesium. Our final example, number three, complete the following decay equation to determine the type of nuclear decay present. Here's our equation with an unknown question mark in the middle. So here's our general rule, our general equation for beta plus decay. We can tell it's beta plus decay because the mass number of the parent nuclei is the same as the mass number for the daughter nuclei. And we can see that the daughter nuclei's atomic number has been reduced by one, which follows the rule for general beta decay. Also, we have neutrinos being produced, which is one of the products of a beta plus decay. If we take away the mass number of the daughter nuclei from the parent nuclei, we get zero, 12 take 12, 
And if we take away the atomic number of the daughter nuclei from the parent nuclei, 7 takes 6, we get 1. And we know that the only particle that has an atomic number of plus 1 and a mass number of 0 is a positron. Finally, let's have a look at the beta plus decay properties. So we can see here on our table that beta plus is a positively charged particle and it is physically a positron. It has the speed of approximately 90% the speed of light, so it travels quite fast. It has a charge equal in magnitude in electron, but opposite in polarity, so it's a positive charge. The mass of a beta plus particle is exactly the same as that of a beta minus particle, and it's 9.109 by 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. The range is up to a few meters in air. Its penetration in matter can be stopped by a thin layer of aluminium or plastic. Ionizing power, it is an ionizing form of radiation. And in terms of its interaction with electric and magnetic fields, it does in fact interact and it causes deflection because it's a charged particle. You've been watching a Juddy Productions video. If you've enjoyed and indeed learned something from this video, then please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.